My name's Jim Ellum and I work in Staffordshire. Um, and I've been part of the working group working with the fire services on, and the university on the strategy. Um, my role is working with assistive technology. I'm a social worker by background, so I haven't got a technical background, but I've certainly had a long experience and interest in working with people living in the community, people with dementia and their carers. Assistive technology is a very broad um, area to talk about, and we can talk around computers, access controls for people with profound disabilities. But really, I like to think of it in these ways, about anything designed to make life easier for people. And that's people with a long-term condition, or d disability, or dementia. Or for those people supporting them with an informal carer, their families, or those people working with them, and the system working with them. And Anne and Peter are a couple who are happy for me to share their story. Peter's got a vascular dementia, a really talented carpenter who built his own home. When I got to know them three years ago, he didn't realise he built where they lived. It's a very lovely home, he's very proud of it, but he'd forgotten he'd actually built every door, every window by hand. And his carer, his wife of over 60 years now, was starting to struggle because Peter kept leaving the taps on and flooding. And for a very house proud couple, floods are an offer of damage. And they wanted something simple, non-invasive, a very private couple, they didn't want to be involved with health and social care because they're a married couple, codependent, support each other. And we found them this magic plug a very simple device that goes in the sink, and when the water leaks a certain level, it lets the water go down the plug hole, preventing floods. It costs three pounds. In this county, we make them available to people free of charge through our cafes. Anne went away, did the trick. Because it worked for her, and she's still got her independence, she came back to the cafe, and a few weeks later, a few months later, she said, I'm starting to struggle now because I, I can't go to the shops any longer, I can't go for a swim, I can't get my hair cut, because Peter will come looking for me. He forgets I've gone, I left a note, but he won't read it. So we introduced a memo minder by the front door. Simple uh, voice recording, and puts on saying, Peter, I've gone to the shops, I'm back in half an hour, please wait in for the postman. And when Peter walked out of the lounge into the hallway, he heard his wife's voice saying that message. And he went and sat down again. Probably five minutes later, he got up again, looked for his wife, heard the message and sat down again. She said it was great because her, her voice never lost its tone of enthusiasm by repeating the same message. Peter loved it, because after 60 years of marriage, what his wife said went, and he didn't argue with her. So he went and sat down. It cost 10 quid. You know, it's not a high cost solution. Anne went on to Radio Stoke and talked about it. The next day, 300 phone calls. But if I went to the radio, we might get two. But Anne knows what she's talking about. She's the carer, she's living it. So through the Carers Association, people can talk about technology. And there's Jim, showing Debbie, the last coordinator, something called a locator. Jim's wife has got dementia and she wandered off when they were shopping. He lost her. He panicked. They stopped going shopping together. Being cooped up at home, their life went down, their well-being dropped. The risk of that family breaking down was very high. Maplin sell these, a simple device, a handheld device that Jim would carry, a little pendant that his wife would carry, now Peter wears. If Peter goes out of range, 10 or 12 feet away, Anne's alerted. If you lose him in the crowd, a bit like a metal detector, she can scan and she can find him. Because of this, they went on holiday again. They went to Blackpool, ballroom dancing. Anne was confident she got her life back. Total cost of solutions, under 150 quid. At what price can you put on that? Two years later, Anne was still caring for Peter at home. But of course, technology is not for everybody. We can be in danger of saying, because someone's wandering, we should tag them. We should put something on them so we know where they are. And we've got to think about civil liberties and rights and choice. But if we can explain that, in fact, we don't want to stop you going anywhere, but we know where you are if you need help, and we can come to you immediately, it's a very different ethos. So we need to think about the ethical considerations of any technology. It's not about replacing human contact, but we've spoken this morning about how tight resources are. And can we stretch them that bit further for, 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 for paid services, for informal carers, by using technology to actually augment what we do and make those resources and those human skills go a bit further. And people can feel very isolated. Rock, I think, spoke about his mum not initiating things. And Jane struggled to remember telephone numbers. She had to wait for carers to come in to ring people until she got a phone with picture buttons on. And now when she rings her daughter, she pushes a photo of her daughter and it rings the number automatically. She can now make contact with people. These are 30, 40 pounds, not a high cost. 
But the cost now to, to Jane that she can now make her contact. And her daughter feels that mum's ringing her to have a chat rather than having to initiate the call the whole time. Again, early stages of dementia, introducing these types of things will have a much last, more lasting effect than introducing somebody when they come towards the final stages. It's about lear you know, learning and adoption. Medication. I mean, how many people have we gone into as individuals or family members who come out of hospital with tablets everywhere? You've got tablets before you go into hospital. You've come home from hospital with new medication. And what we've been able to look at is ways of supporting people with a range of technology, from not in, not in your handkerchief, to a sign on the door, to pill dispensers that you can um, put them in for the week ahead. We've got phone reminder systems now we can use for two pounds a week. You can get four phone calls a day saying, Jim, take your tablets. Far cheaper than paying someone to come in four times a day for half an hour a day to promptly take my tablets. A half hour call for medication only prompt, and most agencies now wanting half hour calls, will cost about two and a half thousand pounds a year. Dementia is a very long journey. And for many of us, we're labelled by what people think about us and say about us without realising the fact behind it. And the Just Checking system, which we've been using in Staffordshire now for about six or seven years, and it's been adopted around the country in greater and greater numbers, is a very discreet system that you can fit in someone's home with permission. And it monitors them 24 hours, seven days a week. It doesn't capture sound. It doesn't capture pictures. What you get is a barcode. As I walk around my property, it gives a barcode. And if you know that person, if you're a family member, family care or professional, you can start to understand, does mum sleep through the night? Does she get up? What happens? If she goes out for the day or at night time, is it a risk? Or is it something about mum's actually maintaining her functions? And this was a chart of a woman who was in hospital. And on the hospital ward, she didn't move from her bedside, didn't need anything. And the hospital team said, long-term care. We, she went home for a day. She went home for a weekend. We showed the hospital team this. It's changed their perception of dementia. We use it in sheltered housing. And some of the scheme managers who before were quite antagonistic around dementia have now got a greater understanding through the systems like this and the training around dementia with our CPNs. But it has helped many people to actually stay at home longer where they want to be and delayed families' feelings of guilt and worry about what happens when they're not with someone. It's very important having that quality information. So assistive technology can be practical support. It can be an assessment tool. And of course, community alarms and telecare. You're all aware of pull cords and pendants, these beige boxes in people's homes. A wonderful service. It links people remotely by buttons they can push, or sensors, as you'll see outside, that will work on my behalf. So if I fall to the ground and I'm unconscious, the falls detector will know I'm in the wrong position and will someone help me automatically. If I don't tip my pill dispenser, and it's telecare enabled, within a half hour slot, my call centre will get a prompt and they can maybe remind me to do something. But all those times I'm doing it independently, no one's worried because they know it's in the background, it's working for me. And for a relatively low cost, these systems tend to, to cost people two or three pounds a week, rising on the amount of equipment with them. It's a very effective way of staying at home and providing support for longer. And I've got a few examples of how it can help. Here's Barbara. Short-term memories, leaving things cooking, the problems. Telecare equipment was fitted which if in the event of a fire happening or, or smoke developing, the community care contact centre were alerted. They could instruct her over the intercom to vacate the property. But it's a way of managing the risk, and of course, it's a way of assessing the risk, because if she started having fires day in, day out, had her dementia moved on a notch? Were there different things to be looking for? So community car alarm centres are not only monitoring and support, but an ongoing assessment of activity and how we can support people. And here's a couple living alone who live in Newcastle in Staffordshire. Devoted couple, married, I think, 55 years. Husband sleeps like a log, and his wife's up to the bathroom about 12 times at night. But she's got dementia, and occasionally she wouldn't find a way back to bed, and occasionally she'd fall, but because he sleeps so heavily, he'd wake up in the morning, where's my wife, and she'd be on the floor somewhere. He was distraught, and he was starting to affect their ability of staying at home, his ability to feel he was a good carer. So we fitted a bed exit strip, so when his wife got out of bed... It talked to a little plug in the bedside lamp and it turned the lamp lights on. So the way from her bed to the bathroom was lit. And because of her change in her perception, they took the door off and put folding doors on. So at night she could see the lavatory right in front of her. And they also fitted grab rails everywhere. So where she was likely to fall or, or trip, there were things to hang on to. 
Now, a year later, they're still at home. She's not falling as often. If she's not back in bed in 10 minutes, the buzzer under his pillow will say, your wife's not back in bed. So he's feeling confident. But the solution cost about £200. But priceless in terms of their independence and their confidence. But we have got limitations about stuff inside the home. So say for walking. Doug's got dementia, lives with his wife. They've moved to a new property and he misses being outside, out and about. They're using GPS technology now to allow him to go for walks. He's got a phone with him. The phone's got GPS built into it. If he goes missing, his wife can dial it up and see where he is. It allows her to see where he is, to say where she'd be concerned and he's concerned if he wanders off too far from home. It will alert if he goes out of a certain area. And if he's gone a long way away, you can actually track where people have gone to. He's still at home. Their relationship's far better. They've got something to talk about. He's in the community still doing things. And one of the questions is, who will pay for it? Will the fire service pay for it just in case? Will social care pay for it? Or will the person pay for it? Or the landlord pay for it? These are questions we haven't quite worked out yet. Just to conclude, one of the things is about where do you get advice and information? One of the best websites is a website called AT Dementia. It focuses on dementia, it focuses on technology, and it's got a self-assessment function to guide you towards likely solutions. You've also got user and carer guides. It talks about ethics and assessments. There's some very good reports coming out recently. AT is a means of supporting people with dementia review. The slides are going to go out after today, so all the links are in there. And more recently, one I've come across, which is actually a user carer guide about what works and where to use it. And these are people's real ex examples, much as Alan Peter and other people I've spoken about, what works for them. So it's not about the technology, it's about the outcomes you want to achieve and proportionality. It hasn't got to be complicated. The earlier you use it, the better it is. It can make life simpler and less stressful for you and people around you. It can save time and money for us all. And it can help us lead the life we choose where you choose. <laughs>